often we think of ethics as a code of rules which people agree not to break. But what if ethics could be more like playing music, requiring teaching and practice, but enabling you eventually to perform with pleasure, skill, and grace? Often in ancient philosophy, virtues are compared to skills. In the words of Aristotle, as is the case with any skill, we acquire the virtues by first doing virtuous acts. We acquire a skill by practicing the activities involved in the skill. For example, we become builders by building, and we learn to play the harp by playing the harp. In the same way, we become just by doing just acts, temperate by doing temperate acts, and courageous by doing acts of courage. He thinks you acquire a virtue typically by being shown other people who have that virtue and you do what they do and gradually you see the point of doing what they do and you learn how to do it the way they do it. And there's obvious analogies with skills like learning to play an instrument. As a guideline for living in accord with reason, Aristotle recommends seeking the mean or middle course between extremes. Acting well in any field is achieved by looking to the mean and bringing one's actions into line with this standard of moderation. Virtue, therefore, must also aim at the mean. For human virtue deals with our feelings and actions. And in these, we can go to excess or fall short, or we can hit the mean. We tend to think of values as toggle switches. There's right and wrong. There's on and off. Uh, there's there's this. There's good, and it's it's opposite. For Aristotle, virtue was finding the middle ground between two opposites. Generosity is not opposed to meanness. Generosity actually is in the middle of, on the one hand, stinginess and meanness, and on the other hand, being profligate with money. Aristotle analyzes courage as the mean between the excess of what what we might call bravado. The, you know, the person who runs into a hail of bullets. I mean, that's not brave. That's just foolish. Um, and cowardice, on the other hand. Plato's student, Aristotle, agreed with Plato's analysis of human nature. But he also took a broader view and asked how humans fit into nature as a whole. In Aristotle's view, Everything has its own unique purpose, or in the Greek word, telos. Surely, just as each part of man, the eye, the hand, the foot, has a purpose, so also man as a whole must have a purpose. What is this purpose? Our biological purpose we share in common, even with plants. So these cannot be the purpose or function of man, since we are looking for something specific to man. The activities of our senses we also plainly share with other things, horses, cattle, and other animals. So there remains only the activities that belong to the rational part of man. The specific purpose or function of man involves the activities of that part of his soul that belongs to reason. 